Hallelujah. We're decreeing it. We're declaring it in the lives of God's people. Hallelujah. We believe it today. Hallelujah. How about you? Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We believe God for restoration, for total restoration. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. God of our restoration. Hallelujah. We thank you today for restoration, Father God. We just thank you. Hallelujah. We're just going to continue to praise him. Hallelujah. God bless you. Those of you that are joining us on Periscope, God bless you. Periscope family, hallelujah. God bless you, you stream family, spirit song family, all of you that are joining us today via the broadcast. Hallelujah. We're just here in the presence of God, just praising him, just giving him the honor, just giving him the glory that is due his name. So I want to encourage you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, Tony. Hallelujah. Thanks for joining us today. Hallelujah. We're just praising God. Amen. We just want to lift him up. Amen. We just want to praise him. I'm excited about today's broadcast. I'm I'm excited about the people of God and what God is doing in the lives of his people, releasing the power, hallelujah, releasing the power in you, hallelujah, in you. You don't have to wait. God wants to release it in you by his power and by his spirit. Amen. God bless you. Hey, amen. And so we're talking about releasing the power in you for restoration. But before we do, we're praising him. We're giving him the honor. We're giving him the glory. If you begin to praise him and thank him ahead of time, begin to praise him and thank him regardless of what you're going through. Hallelujah. He's a heart regulator. He's the fixer. Hallelujah. He wants to fix your heart today. He wants to make it right. Hallelujah. He wants to restore you. He wants to make you whole. Whatever is missing, he wants to repair it. He is the God of our restoration. He is the God who puts it back together again. Nobody can put you back together again like Jesus. Nobody knows how to put you together. Nobody knows how to fix it like him for you. Nobody knows your emotions, knows what you've gone through in your life knows your story hallelujah glory to God like he does hallelujah glory to God yes he wants to restore us today he wants to bring us back into that place of the original and even better than that because when God restores he not just only restores what was broken taken away stolen hallelujah whatever it was hallelujah he wants to make it better Hallelujah. So we praise him today. Come on, let's begin to lift him up, begin to worship him, begin to thank him for it in advance, uh, for all that he's going to do in your life today. You stream family. Hallelujah. Begin to praise him. Begin to thank him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is the awesome God. He is the God that is more than enough. He's the fixer. He's the God who knows how to fix the situation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank him today. Father, we bless you today. We thank you, Father. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, uh, into our hearts and into our lives uh, and into this broadcast. Uh, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for touching. We thank you for even moving right now that anybody who comes onto this broadcast, we thank you for touching them right now. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We thank you, Father, for the presence of the Lord. We thank you for your presence touching each and every person on the broadcast today. We thank you for your delivering power, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for your mighty power. We thank you that there is no power like your power. We thank you for visiting every home, hallelujah, every home that is tuning in even today. We thank you for the release of your power and of your spirit, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you glory today. Oh, we give you honor today, hallelujah, because you are the God that is more than enough. We bless you, Lord, today. We thank you that you are El Shaddai. We thank you that you are the many-breasted God, that you're the God that is more than enough. You're the God with whom nothing is impossible. And so we thank you, Father, for your mighty power moving through the airwaves. We thank you for your mighty power being released today. We thank you that it's moving through the airwaves, that it's moving in this nation, and that it's moving in the nations of the world, oh God. We thank you, Father God, for the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit moving into to the homes of the people that are watching today. We thank you for the transformational power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you right now to move, to just move right now, to touch all those who are signing in today. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We release the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Lord. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We worship and adore you. We give you honor and praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. We worship you. We glorify your name, oh God. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for touching. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for moving. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for restoring, oh God. And we thank you, Father, for moving your people to release the power that is in them, that they don't have to sit around and wait for somebody to put them in the pool, that they can stir up the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of them right now, and they can receive healing, they can receive deliverance, they can receive answers, because the Holy Spirit is moving right now. Hallelujah. Receive it right now. Hallelujah. Have an expectation right now. Hallelujah. When you come before God, when you come before him, come with an expectation. Don't come thinking, well, maybe, maybe, maybe uh, he'll do something. Hallelujah. Maybe, maybe, maybe next week I'll be good enough and next week he'll do something. No, God is a, a God of right now. He wants to do it right now. He wants to break free through for you right now. He wants to touch you where you are right now. That's right. Have expectation right now because God is a God of expectation right now. Hallelujah. God is elevating his people to a new place. Hallelujah. Don't you know you have dual citizenship? We are citizens of the kingdom. We're citizens of the invisible kingdom, the invisible kingdom here on the earth. Uh, yes, we know geographically speaking that God is in heaven, that there is a heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just as there's a hell, there's a heaven. Hallelujah. And we are living in the earth, having an earthly experience. And we are citizens, hallelujah, of the invisible kingdom. And if you begin to learn about the invisible kingdom and understand, hallelujah, that there is an a, a, a invisible kingdom that has resources and everything that you will ever need in this life, all the power, hallelujah, all the resources, all the provision that you need has already been made available. It's already been done. It's already provided for you, hallelujah. That breakthrough that you need right now, God has already made provision for it. You just got to get out of the un believing zone get into the believing zone begin to take your authority begin to move and walk in your authority and your dominion in the earth and lay hold to what god has given you in the earth don't wait until you get to heaven to get it hallelujah there's things that god wants for you to experience and for you to have a power and a dimension of his spirit for you to enjoy and for you to experience right here in the earth hallelujah glory to god thank you jesus somebody said give me some more understanding lord hallelujah amen as you begin to seek him out, as you begin to call upon him, hallelujah, he is doing it. You've been praying and God is doing it right now. That's right. He's doing it right now. Hallelujah. And so we thank you for that today, Lord. Father God, we thank you for opening up the eyes of our understanding today, that we may see and behold the wonderful things that are in your word, that we may understand and comprehend what you've given to us and what a great salvation that we have right now. Everybody who's on this call, hallelujah, everybody who's on this broadcast, hallelujah, uh, let understanding come father let revelation come father i release an anointing for revelation today father open up our ears that we may hear like we never heard before open up our understanding that we may understand like we never understood before father thank you that it's a new day it's a day of revelation it's a day of rejoicing it's a day of expectation hallelujah thank you for the joy of the lord that is our strength and thank you father god for releasing the power in us for restoration, oh God. The power that's in us for restoration, to touch the lives and the hearts of many. Help us, Father God, to get a revelation of you. Help us to get a revelation of you. Help us to get a revelation of you and what you're doing by your power and by your spirit, oh God. Help us to get a revelation of you, what you're doing in this hour. Help us to get a revelation of you. Father, I'm praying for the people that are on this broadcast today. Those that you have put so much on the inside of. Those that are caring, that are walking around with treasures on the inside of them. I'm praying that you will unlock the treasure on the inside of them. That others will be able to be delivered. That others will be able to get 
a breakthrough, that others will be able to walk in another dimension of your spirit. I cannot be shut up. I will not shut up. Hallelujah. As long as there's people on the earth, I will not shut up. If you'll make up your mind not to shut up, there's no demon in hell that can shut you up. There's no demon in hell that can block you, that can stop you. Hallelujah. Make up your mind to be all that God has called you to be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Begin to walk and move in the authority that God has given you. Oh, Jesus, we bless you today. Hallelujah. There is a world waiting for you to release the sound, the signature sound that's in your voice. There is a people that's waiting for you to get there and unlock the prison door that when they hear your signature sound that is unique that there's nobody else on the planet that has your signature sound there's a sound in you that god put in you before the foundation of the world that would unlock people's hearts that would unlock doors hallelujah glory to god amen that would unlock things that have been locked up for many generations but when your sound is released it becomes unlocked and the people can go free hallelujah glory to god please don't be silent please don't let some demon keep you silent hallelujah please don't let somebody say you don't have a right to speak jesus said whom the son has set free is free indeed hallelujah glory to God no more slavery no more bondage nobody can manipulate you hallelujah into shutting up nobody can stop you nobody can block you you have a voice on the inside of you it's time for every believer to use their voice use your voice use what God has given you hallelujah use it today hallelujah don't wait for an emergency use it today when you got up this morning hallelujah i hope you were using it hallelujah i hope you use it throughout the day i hope you use it before you go to bed at night glory to god hallelujah i hope you plan to use it this week because there's people whose lives will never be the same again once you make up your mind to release what god has given you hallelujah i'm talking about releasing the power in you for restoration releasing the power that god has put on the inside of you for restoration for not only your life but for the lives of others because there's things that are on the inside of you that when they're released you're going to be set free you're going to be set free you're going to come out of bondage you're going to be liberated and others are going to be liberated because you release your sound there's somebody that needs to hear your story there's somebody that needs to hear what god brought you through there's somebody that needs to hear your testimony. There's somebody who's going through depression right now. There's somebody who's going through a suicidal thought right now. There's somebody who's going through a, a dilemma in their life that God already bought you out of. You need to let somebody know. Hallelujah. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. There's somebody who just needs to know what God is doing in your life today and they'll be able to receive restoration hallelujah glory to god so i just praise him today hallelujah i just feel like i'm gonna just begin to praise him some more because i feel that that holy ghost anointing in me just to praise him hallelujah so i'm gonna praise him some more hallelujah i want to invite you bright those of you that are out there in the broadcast and those of you here to begin to just praise him hallelujah breakthrough comes as we praise him father we just praise you today we bless you lord god we thank you lord for the release of your power and your spirit we just thank you lord today we thank you that you are the god of breakthrough that you're the god who heard paul and silas and you broke them out and broke them into something new thank you lord jesus hallelujah we praise you today we release our praise we release our sound into the atmosphere into the earth even as we are releasing it into this broadcast we thank you father god hallelujah for the release of the sound of your spirit oh god father we thank you today we worship you lord jesus we give you praise today hallelujah at the mention of your name hallelujah demons must flee at the mention of your name lord jesus hallelujah glory to god hallelujah the heavens shake and shift oh we give you praise today lord jesus we honor you we bless you lord jesus we thank you jesus forever interceding 
interceding for us. Uh, we thank you that you are the breaker. We thank you that you are Bel Parism, that you are the God of our breakthrough, that you break us through uh, into new realms, into new dimensions of power and glory and authority. We thank you, Lord Jesus, today. Hallelujah. You are the God that is more than enough. Uh, you're the God of the resurrection. Hallelujah. We thank you for your resurrection power today, for resurrecting dreams today, for resurrecting hope in the lives of people today. We thank you, Lord God, for your power, for the power and the authority that you have given to us in your name, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We bless you. Hallelujah. We applaud you today. We exalt you today. We lift you up. Hallelujah. We thank you for exonerating us today. We thank you for redeeming us today. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That you've made the way plain. We thank you, Lord, that we're victorious today. We thank you that we're more than conquerors today. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you praise and honor and glory today. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship at your feet, Lord Jesus. We bless you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We just praise you, Lord, that there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that there's no one watching this that is under condemnation today. The word of God says there is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the hearts. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. For bringing your people, Father God, into that place in you hallelujah of revelation we thank you lord god for revelation knowledge today we thank you lord father hallelujah we give you praise and honor and glory today hallelujah we thank you lord we thank you lord that we can come before your throne of grace boldly without guilt without shame because jesus made the way plain for us to come freely hallelujah uninhibited oh father i thank you that you're inviting your people to come that you're inviting people to come from all walks of life people that don't even know you you're inviting them to come you're inviting them to come into your presence oh god you're inviting them to come to receive healing in their bodies uh, healing in their lives uh, healing and restoration healing from the trauma healing from the torment healing from the things they've gone through in life uh, we thank you lord god that you are healing god that you're healing jesus huh? Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, and we just come before you today to receive, to release healing and restoration and to receive wholeness in your presence, oh God. We thank you for your presence, Lord Jesus. We give you honor and we give you glory today for in your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forevermore, and we thank you for that today, oh God. We give you praise today honor and all the glory hallelujah be magnified be glorified lord jesus be glorified father god in the name of jesus hallelujah release your power oh god upon those today father that are under the sound of our voices that are under the sound of my voice even now father oh let there be restoration healing and full recover father that we recover all without fail in jesus name oh glory to god hallelujah bless the lord bless the lord hallelujah he wants to give full recovery amen full recovery hallelujah where there's nothing missing and nothing broken in our lives hallelujah glory to god hallelujah we give him the praise today hallelujah glory to god amen 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 we praise him amen i tell you hallelujah it's hard for me to stop praising hallelujah i'm a praise i'm a worshiper and i love to praise him amen there's something that happens when you get into the presence when you get into that place hallelujah with him there's something that happens amen i want to encourage you all to become worshipers of jesus hallelujah amen worshipers of jesus amen when you get into that place it's hard for you to come out sometime hallelujah as you just begin to worship him there's a place in god hallelujah that god wants every believer to come and that is where you experience him in the spirit hallelujah where you come out of the flesh and you come into the spirit amen and you can experience that right where you're sitting you can experience that wherever you are amen it only takes a minute hallelujah Glory to God. He is as close as the mention of his name. And there is a place even in the spirit realm where you just step over into it and you are in another dimension. You're in another space. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we thank God for that today. Amen. I, I really believe that there's such a need for people to really get that and to really understand it and to really know that. Amen. That there are different uh, realms of the spirit. 
that there's different realms of the spirit. And, and you know, that's all that happens when somebody dies and goes home to be with the Lord. They just step into another space. They just step out of, out of this place into sudden glory, sudden death, sudden glory. Amen. They just step right on over into that heavenly realm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They step into the heavenly realm. They step out of this place and they step into that place. For to be absent from the body is to be what? The Bible says present with the Lord. Amen. They step out of this realm and they step into the glory endless realm. <laughs> they step into the place of endless glory. Now we get to experience the glory sometimes when the presence of God comes and the glory of God comes real, real strong. Hallelujah. We get to experience that. It's tangible. You can feel it. It does something to people. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you have ever experienced the tangible presence of the anointing power of the Holy Spirit coming down in a church service or in your home, even while you prayed? Hallelujah. Amen. You can tap into it right there in your home, in your prayer life. Hallelujah. You can tap into that tangible power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit the third person of the Trinity, the third person of the Godhead, he can literally be experienced. He wants to be experienced in our lives. Amen. There are times you can lift up your hands and you can feel the fire of God coming down upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to invite you right now. Just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit, many times you can feel his tangible, tangible power coming down. Hallelujah. Amen. It should always be something that's fresh in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is real. Amen. And so you can begin to experience the Holy Spirit even in new ways in your own life, in new dimensions in your own life. It just depends how deep you want to go. Amen. There was somebody who came to our church once and she was telling somebody that she comes to Spirit Song when she wants to go deep. Hallelujah. You remember that? Yeah, she said that. And uh, why? Well, because apparently, you know, that's what she related to in terms of where she was going. Okay. But she wanted to remain going there for whatever reasons, maybe because it was just more men there. <laughs> you know, maybe we didn't have as many men, you know, as they did there. Okay, because she's a single woman looking to be married. Okay, and so there's many reasons why people go to go to church and why they go to different churches. Amen. But I just encourage everybody, whatever church you go to, to tap in to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You ought to be able to tap into Jesus and the Holy Spirit because there are new dimensions that God wants to take us into. And there is restoration and wholeness and healing, deliverance that he wants to bring into your life. And many times you're not going to be able to get the deliverance that you need where you are. You need to be able to find where that deliverance is that you need. Amen. God bless you, Anthony. Hallelujah. And so you want to be able to tap into what God has for you. You want to be able to search it out, you know. And when you do begin to search it out, God says he'll be found of us when we do what? When we search for him. When we search for him, there's something about searching in the heart of man that touches God. And so if you really want to experience God in your life, I say search for him and search for the things uh, that you need in your life. Amen. If you need deliverance, then search for it. If it's not in your region, if it's not near you, God bless you. If it's not anywhere around you, it's somewhere Somebody's ministering deliverance, let me tell you, and moving in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But you got to search. You got to search him out. Amen. Praise God. Search him out. Uh, one thing about God is that when we do search him out, he is found of us as you seek him. Because he even says that, ask and you shall receive. Amen. It's not just asking for the things that you, material things that you need in your life. It's asking him for those spiritual things that you need in your life. Asking him for healing. Asking him for deliverance. You know, the things in your life that you need to be complete and to be whole. 
And so if you haven't gotten it where you've been and you continue to seek him out for that, he will manifest his power and his love in your life in that way as you're seeking him out. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to get into this message today. I'm going to be talking about releasing the power in you for restoration. Releasing the power in you for restoration. God wants to restore us where there's nothing missing and nothing broken in our lives. Amen. So let's uh, go into prayer for a minute. Father, we thank you for the word of God that will not return to you void, but that it will accomplish everything that you send it out to do. Thank you that your word is spirit and life and health and healing to all of our flesh. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue confess. I plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, over everyone listener that is listening to this broadcast today. I take authority and dominion over the works of darkness assigned to their lives, assigned to our lives in this space today. And I thank you, Father, I decree and declare no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise up against us in judgment, thou shalt condemn. We thank you that you are the God of vengeance and recompense and that you are the God who brings vengeance and recompense in our lives. Father, we thank you for taking vengeance over all of our enemies. We thank you, Father God, for restoring us, and we thank you for bringing recompense to us in every area of our lives. I decree it and declare it this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we give you praise today for the word of God. In the book of Matthew chapter 8, let's look at that. Matthew chapter 8. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 8. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Are you there? Matthew chapter 8. God bless you. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 8. Talking about restoration. Releasing the power of God in you. Hallelujah. Releasing the power of God in you for restoration. God wants to bring you restoration today. So Matthew 8. Matthew 8 and 16. We'll start there. It says, When evening had come, they bought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. Yes, demon possession is real. You really get a, a, a chance to see this as you go into different parts of the United States. I, yes, I said United States. You begin to see it. You know, you don't have to go far. Right here, at, let me tell you, in Washington State where we are, uh, there have been many people that have come to our church and received deliverance. Amen. And we've seen it live and in living color. Amen. Right here in the state of Washington. Amen. So it's everywhere everywhere there are people there are people who need deliverance whether it's deliverance from demons whether it's deliverance uh, from unforgiveness deliverance from other things deliverance from lust devils deliverance from pornography deliverance from things okay all kinds of deliverance all right you might need deliverance from uh, something that you're eating that's attacking your physical body that's not good for you but you keep eating it you might have an addiction you need deliverance from it's not just tobacco. It could be a, a, a addiction to food, addiction to uh, not only food, but addiction to certain kinds of food. Might have an addiction to sugar. You might have an addiction to meat. You might have an addiction to a lot of different things that you need deliverance from. <laughs> all right. There's all kinds of uh, things that people can get deliverance from. But in this case, we're talking about demons. And so Jesus, hallelujah, was casting out demons. Amen. And then it says uh, in verse 16 again, When evening was come, they bought to him many who were demon-possessed. They were possessed by demons. In other words, the demon had possessed them. All right. And it says, And he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. I can hear somebody saying, Can believers be demon-possessed? Well, what is a demon of lust? What is lust? It can get in a believer just like it can an unbeliever. There are certain spirits of infirmity that get in people's flesh. What is that? It's a spirit of infirmity. There are people that are bound by fear, won't even go outside their house. It happens to non-believers and it happens to believers. What is that? It's a spirit of fear that has literally overtaken that person where they can't even make a right decision to go outside or to move outside of that spirit of fear and it's not just staying in the house it's fear that spirit sometimes can get into a person and they are stopped and blocked in life because of fear fear has torment 
All right. And that's not the way that God intended for us to live. Jesus didn't die on the cross for you to live in torment. Hallelujah. So be free. All right. In verse 17, it says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Jesus took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. He took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. For a minute, let me break that down. That word infirmities there, it's from 769 in the Strong's Dictionary or Strong's uh, Concordance. Um, and so it says this, that word there, infirmities, means weakness. It means illness. It means infirmities, more than one. You can have more than one infirmity. There's a, a man that I know that got totally uh, set free from some things. He had 17 medications that he was on. 17 medications. Hallelujah. All right. Now, infirmities, diseases, sickness. There's many different kinds of sickness. There's people that get on an airplane, they have air sickness. That's not good. You think Jesus wants us to be free from air sickness? Oh, absolutely. I don't want to be sitting next to the person on the plane who has air sickness throughout that flight. Ooh, that's a foul thing. Okay. And so Jesus came to deliver us. He came to deliver us from sicknesses, from infirmities. He himself took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. Any kind of sickness, any kind of infirmity. That means any kind of weakness also that you may have in your life. Jesus died on the cross to deliver us from all weaknesses, from all infirmities, from all sicknesses. Now let's look at Luke chapter 5 and verse 15. Luke chapter 5 and verse 15. In Luke chapter 5, uh, Shakarana Luke chapter 5 and verse 15. Oh, glory. In Luke chapter 5, verse 15 says, However, the report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed. To hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a good thing. Amen. Sometimes you got to draw aside and pray. And when you do that, you know, those of you that are ministers out there, when you draw aside, amen, you got to get away from the rest of the people and not just ministers, anybody. You got to get away from the clutter sometime. You got to be able to hear yourself think. You got to get away so that you can hear not only yourself think, you can hear the Holy Spirit within you speaking to you. That you can hear that still small voice because he wants to lead us and guide us in everything that we do. He wants to help us wherever we need help. Amen. All right. And so he will help us. Amen. God bless you. Amen. All right. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power. Okay, this is awesome. Because here's the Pharisees. Here are the religious leaders of the day and the critics and the critics, because they were at times very critical of Jesus' ministry. So the critics were out, the Sanhedrin, you know, the critics were out. All right, it says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Okay, I remember a time I was ministering somewhere and my pastor said, he, he was joking with me, amen, and he was saying, okay, he says, you got a meeting out there. He says, the Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin are gonna be present. Hallelujah. Let the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He was encouraging me to let the power of the Holy Spirit just flow. Amen. Because when we just remove ourselves from the equation, just let the power of the Holy Spirit flow. He's always going to do what needs to be done. Amen. Hallelujah. He's always going to do what needs to be done. And he's going to do it in such a way that nothing can be done about it. So you may be even given limitations on your job about what to do, this and that. The Holy Spirit is never limited. He always has a way, and he always has a way around so that the plan and purposes of God can be established. Amen. 
So it says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. You know, many times it's people like the Pharisees who want to say you can't heal on the Sabbath. You can't do it like this. You can't do it like that. But God is always looking for a way to cause his people to shine, to cause his people to come into deliverance, to cause his people to be healed and made whole. And so he's not by, bound by days and numbers in terms of you can only heal on these days. He's not bound by uh, traditions of men. And you're not bound either. We serve a limitless God and we are limitless inside of him in terms of his ability to cause breakthrough to come. Amen. And so the power of the Lord was present to heal. The power of the Lord was present to heal. So he can heal on Sunday. He can minister on Sunday. He can also minister Monday morning. He can minister on your job. You don't have to be in church for or outside for God. You know, your work is your worship. While you're there doing what you do in your work, it's ministering to somebody. Hallelujah. When you have an answer and you go into that boardroom or you go into that meeting and God has deep down on, on the inside of your spirit giving you a solution for the, the thing that everybody is wanting to uh, or needing to uh, have a solution to and God gives it to you right there hallelujah amen that's the Holy Spirit in you bringing forth deliverance hallelujah that's the Holy Spirit in you giving the people that are in that room an answer a solution we're called to be solutionists. I don't know if you knew that already, okay? But God's called you to be a solutionist. Amen? He's called you to be a solutionist because the greater one lives on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Those of you that are born again, that are out there that I'm talking to, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. And he has answers. Uh, Jesus said, a greater than Solomon is here. A greater than Solomon is here. Hallelujah. Well, Christ is in us and he is the hope of glory. Christ is in us and he is the one who has solutions. They're on the inside of you. They're on the inside of me. Hallelujah. And so stir up. Hallelujah. Allow the Holy Spirit in you to be stirred up. Hallelujah. And to bring forth solutions. Don't hold back. Many times you're, you're sitting on the answer and you're not releasing the answer. And you have the answer. The Holy Spirit in you wants to bring forth a solution and it's not just at home it's on the job it's wherever you are wherever there's a solution that's needed have you ever been a place and and everybody was just standing around and it was a tragedy or something everybody's just standing around well there's a solution to that hallelujah a lot of times believers just stand around but you have a solution, and if you have a solution, you need to move with your solution. You need to move so that that solution can bring change and bring help to the environment. God is the God who brings solutions. Amen. So you shouldn't be sitting on your solutions. God bless you. Amen. So don't sit on your solutions. If you have an answer, release what God's given you. Amen. Release it to the world. Release it to the people around you, wherever you are. Amen. Don't see somebody drowning and you have a solution and you're not doing anything. Amen. All right, let's move on. Let's look at Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7 and 20. Luke chapter 7 and 20. And Luke chapter 7 and verse 20. And it says, when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you saying, are you the coming one or do we look for another? And that very hour he cured many of infirmities, afflictions, and evil spirits. And to many blind he gave sight. That's what God's called us to do as well. Amen. There are many people that are around you that have afflictions. The enemy is afflicting them. They're going through things. Amen. And you have a solution. You have an answer. Hallelujah. It goes on to say this. Hallelujah. Uh, he went forth. And he ministered in all these areas, and he gave sight. Verse 22 says, Jesus answered and said to them, <clears throat> he said, go and tell John the things that you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Amen. Glory to God. And all of these are in our society today, and they are in need of a touch from the Lord. And you have healing in your hands if Jesus is in you you have healing in your hands you have the ability to touch to calm 
You have the ability to calm the storms of life in the lives of people. You have the ability to touch, to heal, to mend, to mend the brokenhearted, to mend those that are wounded. You know, the word wounded means trauma. trauma. The word wounded, Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. That literally means Jesus went through trauma for you and for me. So any trauma that you've experienced, it, Jesus paid the price for it on the cross. Trauma. Trauma is a serious thing. Trauma can even bring disease into people's lives. Trauma. But Jesus paid the price for us so that we don't have to go through trauma or relive trauma. Trauma has torment. Fear has, just like fear has torment, trauma also has torment. That that thing is going to happen to them again. You know, if there's a rape vi victim or if there's a, a, a molestation victim, many times they're traumatized that it's going to happen again. When they get into certain spaces where they were traumatized, that trauma comes back into their mind again. That trauma has torment. And Jesus wants people who have been traumatized to be delivered from trauma. Maybe you haven't ever been through a situation like that, but there's many people that have, and Jesus wants to touch them. Hallelujah. He wants to heal the brokenhearted. He wants to mend. He wants to restore those that have been through trauma. If you ever lose a loved one, that can be a traumatic experience. It's trauma. And so there are many that are brokenhearted. There are many that are in need of healing in this area. And Jesus wants to bring healing and deliverance to those who've gone through trauma through you. Amen. You can be that vessel that brings or ministers healing to someone who's gone through trauma. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for that today. Amen. That you don't have to be in that space all the days for the rest of your life. You can be free from trauma today. Hallelujah. You know, that if you have experienced that, if you've gone through the loss of a loved one, if you've gone through that, you don't have to hurt. You don't have to feel that pain. Jesus is the fixer. He is the healer. He loves you, and he wants to restore whatever was missing, whatever was broken in your life. Hallelujah. I just want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, whoever's out there who's listening to this broadcast, who's in need of a touch from you right now, who's lost a loved one, who hasn't gotten over the grief and the pain and the sorrow and the torment of it. Father, we release healing today. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, to move supernaturally. And Father, we release the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To touch right now and to bring healing into their hearts and into their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. It was four years ago. My husband passed away. It was a dramatic situation for me. But I want you to know that there is restoration, <coughs> holiness, and healing on the other side of that. Amen. That you don't have to stay in that place of grief, of sorrow, and sadness. Let me help you today. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And even when you feel like you don't have any strength. He's already given you all that you need. And if you'll just begin to lift up your hands, and if you just begin to praise him in the midst of your situation, if you begin to lift up your hands and praise him in the midst of your situation, restoration, healing will begin to pour into your life, begin to utter out, Sometimes it's hard for you to even utter it out when you're in the midst of grief. Grief is a spirit. But you begin to lift up your hands and begin to praise him and break through it. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Father, I pray for that one today. Hallelujah. I pray for that one today. Hallelujah. Glory to God who's in the midst of going through a situation and dealing with grief. And I break the power of every spirit of grief. I loose them from the shackles of grief. I loose them even now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. And I release that peace today to come and rest upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we thank the Holy Spirit. We thank God 
for the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And so we're talking about releasing the power in you for restoration. And so there are times that you can just release the power in you for restoration to come into your life. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7 again. And it says in verse 22, Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things that you have seen and heard, seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. Body of Christ, we got to believe God more for the dead to be raised. And it's not just the dead that are literally dead, D-E-A-D, -E amen, but it's also those that are the walking dead, those that have given up hope, those that are the walking dead that are around us. Amen. The walking dead. Hallelujah. That live next door to you. Amen. Somebody right down the street. I just heard somebody right down the street. At the end of this street. There's about 12 houses down the street. Somebody at the end of this street. I just heard committed suicide. There's the walking dead among us. Suicidal ideations. He had thought about that for a long time. Some of you that were here when we had uh, the woman of God come who taught on suicide prevention. This is real. Amen. There's people that are contemplating suicide right now. And sometimes those have, that have gone through grief even, suicidal ideations come into the mind. See, the enemy's after your mind. He wants to set up a fortress in your mind. He wants to take you out with grief. He wants to take you out with sadness. He wants to take you out with oppression. Hallelujah. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind. You have the victory. You have a sound mind. Operate in it. And that's where you come in choose to operate out of a sound mind when the enemy is bombarding your mind see the battle is in the mind when he bombards your mind you don't have to give into that resist the devil and he will flee when he comes in your mind resist him resist those thoughts the word of god talks about taking every thought captive hallelujah bringing thoughts into subjection to the word of god you have to bring your thoughts into subjection to the word of god that's why many people come under the bondage of uh, pornography because their thoughts bring them into that bondage. But you don't have to live in that bondage, whether it's pornography or whatever it is that's bondage. You can resist it. You can submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And when something begins to come and become a stronghold in your mind, don't wait for it to become a stronghold. You need to come and get prayer before it becomes a stronghold. Amen. Don't let pride stop you from getting the help that you need. Amen. One will put a thousand to flight and two will put ten thousand to flight. And so many times there's things that can be cut off before they even become a stronghold in somebody's life. They can be cut off at the root before they even begin to grow and become a stronghold where people are addicted to pornography or addicted to drugs or addicted to gambling, addicted to whatever it is amen you can have a shopping addiction i know somebody who had a shopping addiction i know more than one person who had a shopping addiction amen you can be uh, addicted and men and women women can be addicted to shopping okay and men can be addicted to shopping hallelujah <laughs> i used to say this in my seminars all the time i'm taking a little rabbit trail but women tend to be more impulsive uh, when it comes to small ticket items. Men tend to be more impulsive when it comes to big ticket items. And so there was a man, this is a true story, there was a man who went out to get milk and he came back home with a pickup truck. Hallelujah. That's impulsive. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So men are impulsive with more big ticket items motorcycles Harley come home oh honey look I just bought a motorcycle you did what <laughs> yeah see that's the one he didn't tell you about because he knew 
what the reaction was going to be. Hallelujah. And so, amen, Jesus comes to set us free from all addictions. Amen. Hallelujah. And then it goes on to say, uh, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. You know, sometimes I've heard people say, well, you can't, you can't preach, you know, the gospel of prosperity to the poor. Why not? They need it the most. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to preach to them. They need to have understanding. <coughs> Amen. There's some spiritual principles that are in the earth that until you tap into them, you're not going to be the beneficiary of those promises. Hallelujah. Amen. If praying alone did it, if praying alone did it, Africa would be one of the richest continents in the world in terms of the per capita, per people. Everybody there would be rich. Everybody would be in the whole continent of Africa. If we're just talking about prayer, amen, for prayer alone, he's not going to get it. Hallelujah. You have to have understanding. And when you have understanding, then you can tap into the spiritual principles that are in the earth. Amen. There's laws, spiritual laws that are in the earth. There's a law of gravity. You got to respect it. There's other laws that are in the earth. You got to respect them if you want to have the manifestation of what's on the other side. There's laws of health. You got to respect them. You can't put a bunch of stuff in your body and expect to get results over here if you're violating the laws over here of health. You got to take care of yourself. Amen. You can't say, well, I'm going to just pray about this. You know, you're going to pray as you eat that thing that you know God told you not to eat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, yeah, come on and expect a blessing. Expect to walk in divine health when you know already. Hallelujah. You need to pray the other kind of prayer that cast out. <laughs> you need to start using your authority and cast out. Hallelujah, because something is trying to get a hold of you, to control you. Amen. Some people are controlled by what goes in. Hallelujah. In terms of the diet. Hallelujah. And so you want to be able to be in that space where you're walking in the authority that the Lord has given you and nothing has power over you. Food doesn't have power over you. Hallelujah. That girl, that guy doesn't have power over you. They're not controlling you, manipulating you. Hallelujah. If they're trying to do that before you get married, hallelujah, guess what? You're in for a treat that you don't want. <laughs> hallelujah. And so all these kinds of things, amen. So God gives us wisdom. Wisdom is in the word of God, amen. And so let's continue on, amen. And so then also it says in verse 23, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. The, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Amen. A lot of people are closet Christians today. They're offended because of him. He said, blessed is he who's not offended in me. Amen. Who's not offended in me. Amen. I'm not offended in Jesus. Amen. Make that a part of your life. That you're not going to be offended. And you know, that's not just, you know, because... You know, you're a Christian. You know, it's offended in all kinds of ways. You know, so yes, you should stand up for what you believe. But also, Jesus talked about how offense and offense is going to come in your life in many ways. Hallelujah. People are going to be offended because of you. People are going to be offended just because you show up. Because you wear the label of Christian. Or many times they don't even know you're a Christian, but there is something about you. There is something about your spirit, just your integrity and your presence. And they know that you're a person of moral uprightness. There's a lot of people that are not saved, but they're morally upright. And people sometimes get offended at them because they want to lie, cheat, and manipulate. And they can't do it around people that are upright. <coughs> and even more so when you're a Christian. Because you're not going to side in with that garbage when it's garbage. Hallelujah. You're going to speak up for it in many cases. You're going to stand for what's right. Hallelujah. Let's go on. 
All right. So in the same hour, notice that it says in the same hour, he cured many of their infirmities. He cured many of their infirmities. Now that word there, infirmities, in verse 21, is another word. And it comes from 3554. 3554 in Strong's Concordance. Okay. And it means disease, illness, sickness, infirmities. It, it, it's the word gnosis. Gnosis in the Greek. Disease. He cured many of disease of illness. You know, sometimes people have a long-term illness. Sometimes people don't even know people are ill because they had it for a long time. Maybe they had MS or some other kind of debilitating disease. And some diseases are time-released. Okay? And so they didn't know until they, you know, 40 years later saw that person in a wheelchair. Didn't know they had a debilitating disease that it started when they were two years old, three years old, and then, you know, years later, okay, or what have you, or might have started later on in their life when they were 40. And it, you know, begins to progress in that way. But Jesus, when he heals, it doesn't matter what kind of disease it is. He heals, and he heals totally and completely so that there's no traces of the disease anymore. When Jesus healed, he healed totally and completely. In other words, it wasn't going to be five years later that the sickness came back and manifested. It wasn't going to be that it played out, you know, 40 years later, now that thing began to manifest. No, no, no. It wasn't a time that he cut off all the roots, all the tentacles. When Jesus heals, it's complete. It's totally complete. <clears throat> Amen. It's a total reversal of every kind of cycle, of any kind of thing in the DNA, of any kind of encumbrance that would bring infirmity again. Jesus' healing is complete. Now, like I said, the laws of health need to be respected. In other words, that person just can't, if there was diet that was related to their illness, they can't go back into a state of gluttonous, uh, okay, or whatever it was, addiction to. They can't go back into that place and live out of that place and maintain their healing you don't tempt god in that way hallelujah all right so that's important that's any kind of deliverance hallelujah you don't go back and you guys delivered you from pornography and say well i'm just going to watch this for a little while i'm just going to you know watch this for a little while uh, two minutes two minutes today instead of 30 minutes no don't tempt god like that hallelujah you're tempting hallelujah and so you want to remain free in that freedom amen amen periscope hallelujah all right and so then let's go on let's look at something else let's look um at the next uh passage and that's going to be in luke 8 luke chapter 8 and we're going to hit verse 2 luke 8 and 2 it says and certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities evil spirits notice it says here that certain women were healed so there's certain sicknesses or diseases that people are literally healed of, and there's certain diseases and infirmities that people are delivered from. Let's look at this again. It says, It came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him, and certain women who had been healed of healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. Seven demons. And sometimes there are spirits that have been literally passed down from one generation to another. Some spirits have been passed down from one generation to another. And a lot of times there are also um, things that have been passed down uh, that are familiar spirits in a family familiar to that family and this is interesting because a lot of times you can look at diets in families you look at the kinds of foods that people ate in their families and you go back and you look and many times you see a thread you see a thread and even to this day you see a thread in terms of what what people are eating today because many times what happens is the mother teaches the daughter and it's 
perpetuated and it's carried on. And the things that bring diabetes into that family, they're still cooking and they're still eating today. And that's why there's so many di diabetics in the family because it's perpetuated. The diet is perpetuated and many times there's other behaviors that are perpetuated. Alcoholism, and if you have diabetes in the family, alcoholism is a thing you really want to avoid. But in many cases you'll see alcoholism in a family of diabetes. And so many times there's things that are familiar to that family that are perpetually passed down and if you look, many times you'll see, um, in terms of the the, uh, the fatalities in that family or the deaths in that family, many times they're tied to those things. Many times. And many times that family is not living out their destiny. Many of the family members have died. Their, their lives have been cut off short. And it's not just the disease, it's the lifestyle that goes along with it the lifestyle that goes along with it, the behaviors that are perpetuated. Many times, you know, there's certain uh, kinds of lifestyles that create even uh, or add and attribute to uh, the disease. If you have anger issues, anger issues in the family, anger issues or unforgiveness issues, bitterness issues, um, if there's a lot of striving in the family, jealousy issues, those things can settle in the bones, settle in the body. Envy is like rottenness of the bones, the Bible says. And so if there's envy in the family, sometimes it's sisters that are envious of each other, brothers that are envious of each other, trying to outdo each other. There was a movie on once about two brothers that are trying to outdo each other. All the time, trying to outdo each other. Okay? And then if you had more than two brothers, they're really, you know, going to be a little, you know, uh, striving there. Huh? I had four brothers, and they used to fight. Three of them used to fight each other a lot. <laughs> okay? But, you know, all those kinds of things, you know. And I really did pray when I first got saved. I spent a lot of time praying just for my family because there were strongholds, certain strongholds in my family. And one of them was that every time we had a holiday, it was always spoiled because three of the brothers were getting together fighting each other. I mean, they'd be out in front of the house fighting. I mean, sock, boom, boom, boom. I mean, like, you know, knock them out, drag them down, fighting. You know, and that was constantly going on. That was a stronghold of anger. Okay? That was a stronghold. You know, other things were a part of that. You know, what was that? Resentment sometimes. Resentment. Because you had it better. You know, resent, you know, all kinds of things going on. And so I had to really pray for those strongholds to be broken. And I thank God that he's a prayer answering God. Amen. Because those things were broken. And in the, hallelujah, uh, in, in the years after that, I began to see my brothers literally manifesting love for each other. Loving each other. I mean, the love that they had for it, they always had love for each other. But I began to see that love in more tangible ways. I didn't see the fighting anymore. Okay, I begin to see them expressing that love for each other more. Amen. And peace in the valley. Ooh, that's peace. Why? Because just being in an environment like that is very volatile. You know, I was like, you know, on the edge of my seat. Because they'd come back in the house and that anger would be on them and that anger would just saturate the house. And I wouldn't know when they were going to blow up again. I wouldn't know if I was standing next to them, if they were going to hit each other. I, I didn't want to be in the way. So, you know, it was a volatile environment. I was like, Phew. so I'd be so glad when that holiday, you know, meal was over, or that holiday time was over, or whatever it was, was over. Mm -hmm. You know, because peace could come back. Amen. There's something about peace. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. You know, there's so much wisdom in the Word of God. Amen. I noticed that many times my father would not intervene. He would not touch it. Hallelujah. Why? You, the Bible talks about touching somebody who's angry. And sometimes you got to wait for people to cool down before you try to step in and calm a situation. Amen. That's the wisdom of God. All right. Let's, let's keep moving here. All right. And so uh, we were looking at that. Uh, 
And then also let's look at something else. Uh, Luke in um, Luke in chapter 13. Hallelujah. Amen. So many of you that are out there, amen, you've been dealing with some volatile situations too. Amen. But thank God for the peace of God. Amen. Just begin to praise and worship. Amen. Begin to get into that place where the peace of God comes and envelops you. You know, to do that or to get even into that place, uh, many times you've got to just spend some time meditating in the Word of God on the scriptures on peace. Jesus is a prince of peace. And so when you begin to look at the life of Jesus and see the peace that was upon him and everywhere he went, and even talking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you peace. Amen. The Holy Spirit will give you peace. Let's look at Luke chapter 13. And so there's a place in God even where we can begin to meditate on the word of God, where we can begin to meditate on the scriptures that refer to peace. Amen. Jesus said, let not, let not your heart, what did he say? Let not your heart be troubled. Thank you. He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Amen. And then the word of God says, let the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your heart and your mind. You got to make a decision to do that. Amen. You got to make a decision to do that because you can make a decision and just be anxious, worried, you know, troubled, envious, you know, whatever it is that the enemy is trying to get you to, to manifest. Amen. Or you can make a decision that you're going to let the peace of God rule and live in your heart and in your life. Amen. Envy is not of God. It doesn't come from God. It's not a part of our new nature. It's not a part of our uh, personality even. Unless you choose to live there and to live out of that space. Amen. But it's, it's, it's working against what God wants to bring into your life. Envy is like rottenness of the bones. You know? You don't want your bones to get rotten before you can even walk in the promise of God. You're not going to be able to grow. You're not going to be able to get what God has for you if you're living a life of envy. Amen. The Bible says rejoice. You know, when other people are being blessed, rejoice. Start rejoicing in that and knowing that, hey, you're getting closer. You're getting closer. You're getting closer. Amen. Envy wants to make your bones rotten, wants to bring resentment into your heart, wants to make you feel like God ain't going to do it for you. God's forgotten about you. It's never going to happen for you. The devil is a lie and his mother-in-law. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to receive everything that God intended for you as you keep walking in the love of God. Keep walking in the peace of God. Keep walking. Keep walking in faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. And sometimes God just wants to grow you up in that. <laughs> where you're not a fleshy Christian. Where you're walk. Come on. Amen. He just wants to grow you up sometime. Amen. Amen. Where you're walking in the spirit. <clears throat> where you're not uh, controlled or governed by your flesh. Where you have control over your flesh. Hallelujah. You know, <laughs> the Bible talks about, you know, if, if you can't control the things here, you know, if... <laughs> What would happen if God moved you, if God promoted you to another place? It's just going to be bigger and more stuff now for you to contend with. And if you haven't gotten the victory down here, what's going to happen when you get there? And so you got to deal with it right here. Amen. you got to deal with it at this level so that you'll be ready. You know, you won't be going through contortions when you get to this, contortions when you get to this level. Amen. You'll be able to, oh, no problem. Hallelujah. Amen. God might have somebody even in your life for you to um, be in partnership with in business or be in partnership with in life, a husband, a wife, you know, <clears throat> and maybe they're the kind of people that has a lot of people around them or they're very people oriented. You got to be able to deal with that. You got to be able to deal with the people that are in their life without wanting to manipulate a situation. And get certain people out of their life just to make you happy. No, you got to grow up. You got to come into that place where you realize what God's given you and appreciate what God's given you and value what God has given you and work with what God has given you and become better 
with what God has given you so that you stop comparing yourself with other people. See, that's where we're looking at the root of it, something called envy. It comes from comparison. Why are you envious? Envious of what? It comes through comparison. Come on, amen. Yes, yes, Periscope. It comes through comparison, doesn't it? Okay, when people begin to compare themselves with each other, with each other. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says those who compare themselves among themselves are not wise. Amen. So be wise. Amen. Hallelujah. God's not, you know, got you on this, you know, competitive thing, you know, with a bunch of people around you. No. No, God has his own measuring stick for you. Every one of us, he has a measuring stick for you. Amen. For us. Amen. And he knows what he put on the inside of you. Amen. And he knows that there's something on the inside of you that you can be the best that you can be in him. If you never learn algebra, he's not demanding it out of you. He's just asking you to allow him to be on display in your life in the best way that he can shine through you. Hallelujah. It might not be like your neighbor. Thank God it's not. You have your own signature sound. Nobody else on the planet has your voice, has the inflections in your voice. So there's certain people that when your voice hits them, boom. You know there's certain people, I know that there's certain people that when Bob hits them, when he shows up, hey, you know, when he hits them, it's like the demons are running. They are running. Hallelujah. Because there's certain spirits that can't, thrive in certain environments of joy you get a person who's depressed and oppressed and put them in an environment of joy over an extended period of time them demons can't hang out there hallelujah that's why there's certain people that won't even congregate around certain other kinds of people sometimes it's the spirits in them that can't take it they can't take it hallelujah oh hallelujah but the most powerful thing that we need to know that we all carry is love. Love never fails. It's powerful. Hallelujah. Love never fails. Faith works by love. So if you ever are at a time in your life when you feel like your faith is not really working or producing for you, then check your love walk. It could be something related to your love walk. Faith walks by love. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm talking about the God kind of love, the power kind of love that God has. Amen. Is patient. All you have to do is read 1 Corinthians 13. Is patient. It envies not. It's not fretful, resentful. Ooh, what did I say? It's not resentful. Resentful because somebody else got ahead. Somebody else, you know, it happened for them. Somebody else got the promotion. Somebody else got married. Somebody else got the new car. Somebody else got the promotion in ministry. Come on. Hallelujah. Not resentful. Love is not resentful. Love is happy. Love is joyful. Hallelujah. Love is not resentful. Amen. That's a big one. Hallelujah. It rejoices. Love is rejoicing. Rejoicing always. Amen. Look at 1 Corinthians 13. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 13. And uh, glory to God. I'm going to look at 1 Corinthians 13. And in 1 Corinthians 13, and then we're going to... Uh, begin to minister in, a, in just a minute here. The first Corinthians 13, it says, verse 4, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up. There's a spirit called puffed up. <laughs> okay. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked thinks no evil. It doesn't think evil. It doesn't meditate on evil. Isn't that good to know? Praise God. Is not provoked. Okay. Verse 5. It says, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, 
but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there are knowledge or there is knowledge, it will what? Vanish away. Amen. I love prophecy. Hallelujah. Amen. I think every prophet should. <laughs> Amen. I love prophecy and what it does in the lives of people. Amen. It brings restoration, wholeness. It brings deliverance. Amen. It, it brings all kinds of restoration. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. Hallelujah. But it has to be motivated by love. Amen. When we prophesy, when we're moving in any of the gifts, they have to be motivated by love. Amen. Not your will or anything, you know, other than the motivation, the root. Love. Amen. Hallelujah. Even making yourself of no reputation. Jesus made himself of no reputation because of love. His love for you, his love for me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's powerful. And so, let me give you another scripture. So, uh, let me see how far I can go with this. Um, Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. You know, when you're going through different things, hello from Russia. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. When you're going through different things, it's important for you to know that no matter what you're going through, your spirit will sustain you. Your spirit will sustain you. Uh, Proverbs. We're going to Proverbs now in the Word of God. The book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. In the book of Proverbs 18. And Proverbs 18. And from Proverbs 18, we're going to look at verse 14. Proverbs 18 and verse 14. And Proverbs 18 and 14. And it says this. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmities. That's what it says in the King James Version. In the New King James Version, it says, The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness. But who can bear a broken spirit? Who can bear a broken spirit? A spirit of a man. The spirit of a man will sustain him. A spirit of a man will sustain his infirmities. Will sustain his infirmities, which means sickness, disease, or infirmity. Okay? Will sustain him in the midst of that. This is powerful. Hallelujah. Will sustain him. What does that word sustain mean? It means that your spirit will hold you. It means that your spirit will seize. You know, when you're going through something, there's a lot of clutter out there. Well, your spirit will seize it. Cause everything to stop. Cause you to be held. Cause you to be sustained in the midst of everything that you're facing. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity will provide the spirit of a man will provide for him what he needs right there when he's facing infirmity this is what this word sustain means it means to supply to provide seize hold feed guide make provision and nourish i love this word nourish your spirit will nourish you when you're facing infirmity when you're facing a traumatic situation when you're facing a diagnosis from a doctor that's not what you want to hear <laughs> okay when you're facing a situation you know when they said a loved one only has so long to live your spirit will sustain you okay when you go through whatever it is that was meant to crush you your spirit will sustain you most people haven't gone through those kinds of experiences where your spirit is so crushed devastated I'm talking about devastation okay I remember one of my pastors sharing he had a son that was hit by a car and died 
That's devastation. That's devastation. Another one of my pastors had a wife who died from cancer right after she gave birth to their little baby. About two years later, he had to nurse her through that. That's devastation. That's trauma. Okay, Those are traumatic experiences. That's devastation. Okay, And so Jesus has to come and bring healing. But the thing is, both these pastors are powerful men today because they didn't wait for the disaster to come into their lives. They spent time building up their spirit before devastation came. So devastation that was meant to overthrow them did not take them out because they had spent time building up their spirits. And so when adversity came, when devastation came, their spirit sustained them. Their spirit held them up. Their spirit nourished them and provided supply for them. You want to have a full supply if you ever hit that place in your life. When my husband passed away, it was devastation, but it was what I had put in, what the Holy Spirit had put in me all the years before that. Living life as a single woman and all the time that I went to church and all the time I had heard the word, amen, yes, God, and all the time, amen, the Holy Spirit had given me those words, all that training and preparation had prepared me for that. It was no surprise to God, but it was a surprise to me the day that it happened, let me tell you. But because of spending time in the Word, my spirit, see, I didn't go crazy. I didn't leave. I didn't give up on God. I didn't say, oh, okay, I'm out of you guys. You guys do the best you can. Love you. It's over for, you know, the church now. It's over. For, you, know, I'll, you know, I don't know. You know. No, 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 no. Jesus is still on the throne. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, Jesus never left the throne. Amen. And he's still interceding for all of us. And I was aware that he was interceding for me then the most. Hallelujah. Weeping may endure for the night. Let me tell you, there were many nights I cried myself to sleep. There were many nights of pain, of sorrow. But he sustained me. Amen. And it was because of all that word that was in there, all that word that had been deposited, amen, the 20 plus years before that happened, amen, that sustained me. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, his infirmity, his sickness, his illness, his weakness, okay? Because when you go through a loss, you feel weak. Okay, especially if they were a part of your life, especially if it was a husband or a wife. That was a part of you. Okay, but the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad today? Hallelujah. That makes me happy. Amen. I got a surge of joy just from that, just from releasing that. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I believe that there's somebody out there. Amen. Who just got blessed from that. Amen. Well, glory to God. I'm going to. Hallelujah. Uh, and this, I want to say this, too, because I didn't give you all the rest of that word nourish. You know what that word nourish means also? It means health and growth. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Sustain will keep him alive, will keep him and give him what is necessary also. It means also to supply with what is necessary for life. So your spirit will give you what is necessary for life if you will spend some time putting inside your spirit when the time of calamity comes in your life you will have what you need to nourish you to give you what you need for life amen you will live and not die you will live and not die a lot of times people die not because of disease but because they give up because they haven't spent time putting in amen what they will need in the future so I want to encourage you to put in what you need for the future. 
Spend time in the presence of God. Spend time in the word of God. Amen. And allow the Holy Spirit to dig out what you need for the future. He knows what we all need for the future. And he will, like a treasure, as you dig it out, he'll give you what you need for your future. Amen. And then, I want to share with you this, the rest of this word, what this means, this word nourish. Because I believe this is the hour that God is nourishing his people. It's your time to be nourished. It's your time to flourish. Because when you're nourished, you can flourish. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. It means to cherish, to foster, to keep alive. It means to keep alive. Your spirit will keep you alive. The spirit of a man will keep him alive, will sustain him and keep him alive in times of trouble. Will keep him alive. Hallelujah. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Testimony. Amen. Your spirit will keep you alive. Hallelujah. And sometimes you got to speak to your spirit and say, be revived. Amen. I, you know, I was listening to some spirit songs. Amen. And I just love the spirit songs. Amen. They're like, oh gosh, they're like gold to me. Okay. Every one of them is like a gold record to me. Amen. Because it is gold in the spirit. Okay. And I was listening to this uh, song, the Holy Spirit had given me during one of our times of, of worship, of spontaneous praise and worship, and it was saying, be revived, come alive, amen. I was speaking these very words and didn't even know that this was what I was saying. Come alive, be revived, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God, I was prophesying through the song. All right, so it says, um, to cherish, to foster, to keep alive. It also means to strengthen and to build up or promote it means to build up or promote. So what I got out of that was this, to say to you, amen, is to get your spirit right, to get your spirit right, amen, to build up your spirit, amen. I'm going to plug this in, Periscope watchers, amen. So hold on, I'm just going to phone just a minute so I can put the battery in the battery doesn't die. <laughs> amen, there we go. All right. And so, um, hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And so, get your spirit right. This is a word that I got in my spirit as I was going through this study to share with you. Get your spirit right. What am I saying? Build up your spirit. We don't know what's to come in this United States and in the world. But you can get your spirit right. You can begin to build up your spirit on your most holy faith and you will be ready for whatever comes. Hallelujah. Get your spirit right. And then keep your spirit right. These are two major keys for the days to come. I'm saying this prophetically to you. These are two major keys for the days to come. Get your spirit right. Hallelujah. That has to do with building up your spirit. Romans 8.26 says, The spirit helps our infirmities, our weaknesses. For when we know not what we should pray for as we ought, he takes hold with our spirit. He'll begin to pray through us the perfect prayer for your future. He'll be Begin to pray through you the perfect prayer for your future. Amen. As you pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. He'll pray through you the perfect prayer for your future. And as you're praying for your family, as you're praying for the nation, in the Holy Ghost. Now, I know it's powerful when we make decrees. And I'm, you know, not saying stop making decrees. Continue making your decrees. But also, I want to encourage you to begin to increase praying in your prayer language. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Because when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you're praying according to what the Word says. Prayers that will build your spirit man up. It will build your spirit man up. You'll become like Superman in the spirit on the inside. So that when you're facing a situation, a troubling time in your life. The you on the inside will be bigger, so much bigger, so much bigger than anything that's on the outside that it will swallow it up. It will literally swallow it up. It will like, what? Oh, no. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not any day. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not having it. Hallelujah. You'll say, I'm not having it. Oh, no, I have authority over this. Jesus died on the cross for this. <laughs> See, this is the thing. And this is something that you need to know. So the devil never cheats you out of anything Jesus died on the cross to give you. 
Jesus died on the cross to give us abundant life. And you can have every bit of the abundance if you will refuse to lose. To give up your right to what Jesus died for you to have. He died for you to have peace. He died for us to have prosperity. He died for us to have healing. He died for us to have everything that is written that he said. He said in John 10, he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. So get everything that God has made provision for you to have and make a decision. You're not going to be denied out of what rightfully belongs to you. If you know what's in the will, if you know what is yours, you're not going to let somebody push you over like you are not entitled to what is rightfully yours. So go get it. <laughs> go get your stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all of those that are here today and everyone that is in our listening audience. In the name of Jesus, Father, I just take authority and we come as one, Father God. We release our faith today for everybody on this broadcast by you stream and by Periscope. Father, we take authority and dominion over the works of darkness that have been assigned to their lives in the name of Jesus. Uh, and we release the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit now to move into every situation, into every uh, trauma, Father, into every situation, and to bring deliverance, to bring healing, to bring wholeness right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for moving by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. And we release our faith. Come on, people of God in the room. Hallelujah. Begin to release your faith. Begin to release your faith, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release our faith right now. We thank you for a demonstration of the Spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for a demonstration of the Spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost right now into the homes, into the houses where people are watching right now. We thank you for a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Depression go. Oppression go. In the name of Jesus, we cast you out. In the name of Jesus, Father, we release the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We release it. We drive out every spirit of bitterness, spirits of grief and sorrow and sadness. Sadness. We cast you out. In the name of Jesus, we command you to go. In Jesus' name, loose the people. In the name of Jesus, go from them today. In the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of heaviness, spirit of oppression, we cast you off of them. We cast you out and away from them. In the name of Jesus, uh, Father God, we loose your peace today. We loose your joy today, Father. Oh, right, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak to addictions. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare divine deliverance. Uh, deliverance from uh, addictions. Uh, deliverance. I speak it right now. You sit your word and heal them, Father. You sit your word and deliver them. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the delivering anointing right now that is going to those that need it today. In Jesus' name, deliverance from addictions, uh, pornography, drug addiction, sugar addiction. Hallelujah. Oh, fornication. In the name of Jesus, uh, addictions, homosexuality, addictions, Father God, whatever the addiction. In the name of Jesus, I loose them from the bondage of addiction today. In Jesus' name. Oh, that thing that's driving them, that's driving them, Father. In the name of Jesus, I bind it. I break it off of them today. In the name of Jesus, that thing they feel they have no control over that comes and makes them do things they don't want to do. I break it in the name of Jesus. I loose them from it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Koramasanda. Now, hallelujah, those of you that got free from something today, the word of God says go and sin no more, hallelujah, but you got to get in the word of God so you can be solidified, so you can be strengthened, so that you have strength to resist the temptation, so that you have strength uh, to stand on the word of God. You got to get around other believers, you got to stay around other believers, a company of believers that are going to continue to build, hallelujah, that word that's on the inside of you and encourage you in the word. And so I want to encourage you, hallelujah, stay plugged in, amen, to good, solid, 
biblical teaching. Stay plugged in uh, to places where you can receive deliverance. Amen. Where you can be ministered deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Kadamahaya. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. That where your spirit is, there is liberty. And we thank you for the liberty of the Holy Spirit today, moving on the waves, uh, hallelujah, of you stream and moving on the waves of Periscope. We thank you for divine deliverance today. We thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for rooting out the works of darkness, hallelujah, rooting it out, Father God, and setting the captives free. We thank you for rooting it out, Father God, for rooting it out, bitterness, rooting out resentment, rooting out resentment, rooting it out, Father. I thank you for that one today, hallelujah. God is doing something in you right now concerning resentment. There's somebody out there, and God is bringing deliverance to you today in that area of resentment. You got to let it go, though. You got to let it go. You got to participate in your own deliverance. You got to let it go. You got to let it go and make a decision that you're going to walk free of resentment. Mm -hmm. And some of you are resenting God because you're blaming God right now for things that have happened in your life. Stop it. Hallelujah. Jesus loves you. He wants to make you whole. Amen. He's got the best for you. Amen. And you're going to receive the best that he has, even better than what you would have for yourself. He's got the best for you. He's processing you. He's taking you through. He's bringing you out. Don't give up. Don't faint. Don't throw in the towel. Don't say, well, I'm just going to go down here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to fix it. No, let Jesus fix it. Hallelujah. Don't give in. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Your breakthrough is yours. It belongs to you. Don't let somebody else walk in what Jesus provided for you to have. It's your breakthrough. It's your time. Let go of the resentment and receive your deliverance. Let go of the resentment. Hallelujah. Just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I let go of the resentment. I let go of the disappointment. I let go of the pain. I release it to you. Heavenly Father, I forgive and forgive me for despising you and your word and others. I let go of it all, all the disappointment. Forgive me, Lord, in Jesus' name. That's real. Amen. Hallelujah. Receive. Receive right now in the name of Jesus. God loves you. We love you. You are loved. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you today for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you've done. And we thank you for what is yet to come. I just hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, Refreshing waters have come to you today. Take in that water, says the Lord. Refuel and refresh. For there is much that I have for you to do. There is much that I have for my people. There is much on the horizon. Look not at the pain of the past, but move forward into your destiny. Move forward, for there are new times, there are new people that I'm going to bring you before. There are new places that I'm going to take you into. There are new things that you're going to discover, things you never dreamed of, things you never walked in, but I will take you into them, into new places, into new discoveries for you will even come to discover yourself in a new way. For I am opening up new pathways and new days are ahead. And you will be one that brings refreshing and reviving to many, even to a great multitude as you continue to walk in the ways of me, says the Lord. For the days before you are filled, filled, with pleasures, filled with new experiences, and filled with my spirit manifesting through your lives. So, open up your heart again, afresh and anew, for I am pouring in. I am pouring in into the places of devastation. 
I am pouring in into the places of hurt. I am pouring in into those places, the deep recesses of your heart. And I am bringing healing this day. And I am bringing wholeness this day. And I am restoring you, says the Lord. Receive the newness of my spirit this day. Father, we thank you for that today. We give you the praise. We give you the glory for that which you're doing and for that which you have done in our lives. Be magnified and be glorified. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. Hallelujah. Periscope, we love you. Amen. Be blessed. Have a blessed day. You stream. Be blessed. Have a blessed day and bless somebody. Amen. God bless you.